Hello, what is up guys? Today I'm here to tell you how to do a PC build and stuff like that. I do not have my uh, recording set up right now, so I will not be able to do displays on the screen and stuff like that. So I'm sorry if I can't do stuff like that. Um, but I'm going to explain to you what you want, what you could do to save some money and stuff. So we're going to start by... Um, I have some of this stuff written down, so I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and I have some stuff to say. So, first thing first, you need a computer case to put all of the components from a computer. A component is a piece of hardware. Hardware is something that runs software. So, if you don't know really what hardware is, it's the stuff inside the computer. And components is the stuff inside the computer. So, this is like from basics and stuff. So, a CPU stands for uh, here, let's not get into that, sorry. So, we're talking about cases. Get a case, a good case. You want a case that's going to work and it's going to fit. So, what I recommend doing is looking up other videos. I'm not saying to view other videos, just... I'm trying to help you here, but it's almost... It's going to take really long to explain how the case works. And I am going to explain it, though. So, the case is really... I mean, it's not really that hard. I just want to explain to you, like, what to worry about, because I've done this before when I first started. So, a case is going to cost from 50 to, the like, the minimum of 50, and if you want, you can spend 80 bucks if you, on a case if you want a really good one. But make sure you get one that has these little sliding things in the front. They, they're kind of, like, about that, like, this big. You'll see them on the front of computers. If you don't see it, Please don't get the case because you can't get a DVD drive. A DVD drive is so important because you need to install Windows through a DVD. And without Windows, you can't even run the computer. So, what's the point? So, we're going... There's two options. What are you making? If you click on the video, most likely you're making a gaming PC. I'm going to explain the gaming PC first. Afterwards, I'm going to explain um, normal PCs, which is really not that much different. It's just two different CPUs, and I'll explain why I use two different CPUs, because it's cheaper either way, so I'll tell you. So, so the case, like I said, you can get a Cool Master, you get tons of them. Get a mid-tower. If you want to go large, you can, so you can put more stuff on it, but get a mid-tower. For me, I got a mid-tower. So... Next comes the motherboard, and I recommend MSI motherboard. And now one thing you got to worry about motherboards. They can be around 100 150 200 and even $300. I would, I would recommend getting like a $100, $150 motherboard. I, you know, how about $100? $150 MSI. I recommend MSI. And you got to make sure, I'm going to explain to you here, the CPU, I'm going to cut back into the motherboard and explain to you what a CPU is. CPU stands for a Central Processing Unit, which means like, let's say you run, um, let's say you run Skype. That's a graphic. It goes through the processor and it displays on the screen. That's called Intel Integrated Graphics. That is what runs the processor. So a CPU needs to fit the motherboard. And there's two kinds of PC, C, PCUs, CPUs, and one is Intel, and the other is AMD. Now, for game builds, I'm going to say AMD to go for. Now, one, I'm going to explain to you why. And one second, I'm going to run the program. I have this typed out on, and I've went through all of this stuff like crazy, um, explaining to people why I use Intel instead of AMD stuff like other that and I'm using Skype because I answered someone's question so let me let me look here for a second so if you hear people in the background I'm sorry and I'm sorry if there's a delay in the uh, voice and video but I'm doing my best here I'm not at my studio so I'm not gonna have the best quality but it doesn't matter I'm here to explain stuff to you so so I said here so and and one thing, CPUs have cores, they're called, and they're kind of like the, 
just the more there is the better it is but I will say this I'm going to explain the course and it says the reason why I buy Intel and Intel actually is twice as much as an AMD people argue why would you buy an Intel that is twice as much as an AMD and you can get an AMD with eight cores instead of an Intel for core four cores with twice as much it's a win-win situation actually no because the reason why I buy Intel is because Intel chips might say four cores and AMD's might say eight cores for cheaper so you're like oh whoa why wow why why is it like that you what was it the company no actually it's because of one uh, Intel includes more software and B the built cores are w built way better and made to last longer now I'm going to tell you AMD is still a processor so I'm going to go into GPU. GPU, what it does, it runs, GPUs run games way smoother. So a CPU tends to jump around doing critical tasks while CPU, a GPU runs everything really smoothly. Meaning it goes through each graphic and renders everything through its little squares. And uh, a, well, you can't have a GPU without a CPU. It wouldn't even support. Because the CPU has a clocking system inside of it and runs the critical tasks while your GPU is why you need a GPU and a gaming PC. But, this is why from the beginning I said, get an AMD, or I don't know if I said that, get an AMD because, listen to this, you know how I said earlier, how the cores are not as good as, they're, they're built cheaper, uh, Intel's cores are better? Well, doesn't mean anything. Because if you get a GPU, when you run a game, you're not running it off your processor you are running it off of your GPU. Think about that. So you're not stressing your CPU out, you're stressing your GPU out, which is made to be stressed out by video games. So, if you can get an AMD for twice, like cut the price off, that's good if you're doing gaming. Now, if you're not if you're not doing gaming, get an Intel. The reason is because let's say you're going to do Microsoft Word, AMD is just not going to be the best for running something like Microsoft Word or something. I mean, it's called integrated graphics for a reason um, because it doesn't run video games and it's going to jump around don't expect to run video games on a CPU it's not going to work because CPUs aren't up to date like that but I'm saying right now if you do not have if you're planning on put, not putting a GPU in and not making a game PC get an Intel then it'll be around the, it'd be pretty good price um, but if you're getting a GPU get the AMD processor get maybe like a 6 core or an 8 core if you want I have an Intel personally and an NVIDIA I have an NVIDIA GPU. I have a GTX 970. So get the CPU, and the CPU is going to cost around 100 for gaming, and it could cost around 200 to even 3,000, 3,000, 300 to 1,000, depending on how much you want to spend in Intel. I spent around 300 for mine at home for my desktop for my setup, and now it goes back to the motherboard. The motherboard has to have the CPU. It's just the CPU is just a little chip goes onto it. The CPU has to fit the motherboard. So if, let's say you're getting an AMD motherboard, type in AMD MSI motherboard. Now if you're doing a normal PC, type in AMD, or not AMD, sorry, scratch that. If you're doing a normal computer without a GPU, I recommend doing Intel. So I said, get a motherboard that says, M. you can do ASUS if you want, or MSI, uh, MSI Intel. Now MSI is gaming, so you can go for ASUS or shoot for ASUS or something like that, something cheaper. Um, if you're doing normal, so if you're just going to do normal integrated graphics. Um, but MSI, get AMD, and there's three different types of AMD sockets, and there's a bunch of different Intel sockets. Intel's sockets say like something like 1155, 1150, stuff like that. Look for that on the motherboard if it says socket 1150. You have to get an Intel processor that says 1150 socket. Otherwise it will not fit and it's really it's going to be impossible to put in. You're going to crush your CPU and you're going to oh you're going to be returning that thing with no money back. I guarantee it. Um, unless you have a warranty on it of course. I almost did it myself actually and I messed up on the socket and I almost closed it and I just realized it's like hey this thing ain't going in. This is when I first did it too and I was so close so we returned it. I was upset because I wanted to get to work that day and I was so upset and I didn't get the overclock because I didn't care. I had an overclock graphics card so it didn't matter for me. But um, now I'm going to explain. Um, so now I'm going to explain the AMD. There's AMD 
AMD1, AMD2, AMD3, and AMD3 Plus. These are all sockets. You need to find the AMD that fits the motherboard. Now, if you go on Amazon, there's most of the time you see an AMD processor. Then you scroll down, you see a combination. People say most. It says most people buy this motherboard with this processor. I recommend looking for the the combination, so you don't even have to look. Make sure the do the sockets do fit, but most of the time it'll make your life easier to look for a decently priced motherboard for a decently priced AMD for gaming. And same way with Intel, but Intel's just for me it's easier to find the socket because I on every motherboard it always says the socket, but on the processor I can never find the socket ever. I don't know why on Intel I can find them. Just like that. I don't know. If you guys can, good luck. Maybe find a, something on the internet. I don't know. But so the sockets matter. Now this is, and you want to get an ATX motherboard. ATX means like it fits newer graphics cards, newer processors, and stuff like that. So you make sure it's ATX, not some old stuff or something like that. And you want one that supports Ethernet, um, stuff like that. So, uh, and Ethernet is like wired and wireless. So if you're doing, it, most people do wireless because they can't hook an Ethernet cable to their computer station. Because most, of the, actually, some of the time it's not like that. But yes, you get into that later. Um, now we're gonna go into um, RAM. RAM is the thing that that's how much you can run at once. Eight gigs is the recommended for games and normal just normal integrated graphics no matter what 8 gigs is recommended now most graphics cards come with in built in graphics ram they're called video ram it's called ddr5 ram or something like that uh, ddrl5 or something like that but it's already in this the gpu so that means the cpu still uses um it still uses like uh its own uh, the RAM that you put in the uh, motherboard, but the CP the GPU already has its own built-in RAM. Unless what you have what is called in most laptops, if you have a GPU inside of a laptop, they're called a chipset, and they share the RAM on the motherboard, which is sometimes annoying. So you can't run GTA on the ultra five, ultra high 4K if you want to do that, but it's okay. So. Um, Yes, so that's RAM, and you want 8 gigs, and RAM just goes right on the motherboard. It's really simple. Um, it's around going to cost you 50 bucks for one 8 gig, and you can go up to 16, even 32, and this is depends on what motherboard you buy. Now, you're going to see how much RAM a motherboard can support. You want to do a lot of research on your motherboard, otherwise you're going to buying something that is actually horrible. So you got to look for the right socket, you got to look for the amount of RAM support. I like 32 gigs of RAM supported. So I put around 8 to 16 in mine. I never really put 32 because when do you need 32 gigs of RAM unless you're running like two games at once? And yes. And now we want to get a good, decent space hard drive. Most people are like, why don't I get 100 gigabytes? There's such things called virtual RAM. It runs on your hard drive. It's called disk space. And the more space if you have, the more space you have free on your disk, the better your computer is going to run because it's called virtual RAM. It means that all that's running on your disk. So anything that's on your disk, uh, sorry, those of you who don't know what a disk is, it's a hard drive. A hard drive. They call them disks and computers. So any any time you hear word disk, it could mean hard drive. It could mean flash drive. It could mean all those sor sorts of things. And um, oh, sorry, someone texted me on Skype. Um, and. So yes, you gotta think about the RAM, the motherboard, and everything. So yeah, now we're going to talk about since we got the case, the hard drive, and oh, sorry, I cut myself off. Scratch that. We're still on the hard drive. You want to get at least a terabyte. I'm gonna talk about how much a terabyte of hard drive is gonna cost. You're thinking, oh my god, it's gonna be big bucks. No, it's only about 50 bucks for one terabyte hard drive. That's a thousand twenty-four gigabytes. You can you can play games easily on that. And if you want to get a 500 gigabyte one, it's going to cost you like 25, 20 bucks. I mean, it's not going to be that bad. And then, now, you want to get a... This is one of the critical things you're going to need, too, is a DVD drive. Because if you're going to buy Windows, 
10. It's gonna Windows, most likely you're gonna buy in Windows. Any version of Windows is 100 bucks, no matter what. If it's Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows Vista, Windows 9, there is a Windows 9, but don't buy it. Actually, it's not on the market. Um, sorry, Windows Vista, Windows 10, or Windows 8, 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10 are all 100 dollars, no matter what. I recommend Windows 10 now, even though drivers might be messed up and drivers are. Hmm. If you want to go with Windows 7, you can, but go with Windows 10. It's the same exact price. It's the newer version of Windows, so I recommend it. It's 100 bucks for that. So now the next thing you'll need is a DVD drive, which is only about 20 bucks, and it's from Asus. And just type in Amazon DVD drive. It'll come up, and it'll be like this thing. You'll see the where the tray comes out, but you'll see this. It'll look like steel, and be like, "Well, that's ugly." Remember those things I was talking about at the beginning? Those long things. Um, they're like that big in the front. That's where it slides in. It slides in right there, and it plugs into the motherboard. So that is important. You have that. Otherwise, you can't install Windows, and you would have to get a flash drive, and it'd be a pain in the butt. And if you bought the disc, you'd have to bring it back. And what's crazy is, as soon as you open the seal on a uh, Windows disc, you have voided your there's pretty much no warranty on it at all. So you got, you better keep that disc safe. Unless you buy a warranty, I'm not sure. I didn't have a warranty on my Windows 8 disc, and I don't even have a Windows 10 disc. I just use a flash drive because they give, they just turned off the free um, thing for Windows 10, so you have to buy it now. So it kind of sucks. But so yes, you want a DVD drive that's going to cost you 20. And now we're going to talk about GPUs. This is the last resort. Actually, you can run everything in this computer with everything I just named without a GPU. A GPU is not even needed. But to run games, you're going to need a GPU. I'm telling you right now, you can't run everything off a CPU. The reason is a GPU has 64-bit color processing and it is way smoother. A CPU jumps around. And I'm telling you, if you go out and buy an Intel CPU and you don't buy a or buy an AMD CPU and don't buy a GPU, that's fine. As long as you don't play games if you play games you're going to be disappointed you'll be like why isn't it working it's because you don't have a gpu you need a gpu gpu is called graphics processing unit for a reason cpu is called central processing unit for a reason because it's the central processing it's not made for graphics i mean it is but it's only made for two dimensional graphics not three dimensional graphics so if you're playing a game like uh i say like two dimensional graphic game that's like 16 mm, bit yeah, you're fine on that Intel, but if you're going to be playing three-dimensional games, please get a GPU. And GPUs can cost from a range from one hundred dollars fifty, or sorry, I'd say a hundred to a thousand to ten thousand dollars, depending on how much you want to spend. I run. Uh, I think you should spend around two hundred, two fifty, maybe one hundred fifty, if you want on a GTX. You can learn about the GTX, Nvidia's GTXs. You want a GTX. So a GTX 9, I got a GTX 970. That's about $330 just for that. So if you want to spend for a 970, a 980 is 500, and a Titan is 600, and a Titan Z is like a thousand, and Teslas are ten thousands, like a ten thousand dollar graphics card, which is outrageous, it's ridiculous what they put inside of it. But you can get like a GTX 660 for. 150, 200, but you, you only be running games like Skyrim and stuff, but it's okay, you can always upgrade, but I recommend waiting that extra time and getting like a 970 or 960 or something like that for only like 200, but now, everything, now I'm going to add up all the costs of everything besides the GPU, so this is if you're going to buy everything and then wait on the GPU to get a better GPU, like I, I, I recommend if you don't have enough money, if money's not an issue, then go ahead and get the GPU. It's going to be costing four, around $400 without the GPU. Now, if you're going to wait for the GPU and max out your GPU to like a 970, GTX 970, it's going to be around $730 without monitor or anything, just the computer itself. Okay? Now, if you're going to buy like an average graphics card, it's going to be like six, five, six, $650 around there. Um, depends on what games you play. So do research on good graphics cards, stuff like that. There's also AMD graphics cards, but I recommend NVIDIA. Please, 
because NVIDIA was Voodoo at one time, and Voodoo was one of the first graphics card companies ever in the gaming world, and they made two-dimensional stuff, and they were bought by NVIDIA, and look at what NVIDIA today. They're way better um, than they used to be. Um, and now, these are accessories, so these are things you'd buy afterwards, like, so a monitor can cost around $200. A mouse, gaming, if you're going gaming, 60 uh, non-gaming, like, 5 10 bucks. Keyboards, they can cost 100 bucks. gaming, if you're going razor-wise. If you're not going razor-wise, you can get it as cheap as you want. Um, you just look on the internet, it's really not that much. But if you're going to go all razor and all good monitor, you're going to have a price around $380 with the monitor and all the razor stuff but you don't even need that to build the desktop but if you don't have a TV or a monitor I'll explain to you what the difference the ref so a TV is different it has like a different it has different bits on it like it doesn't have a, re a refresh rate is like frame rate and it has like a 0.5 delay and a monitor on the other hand it has really a lot faster refresh rate and it's got better color and that's why they are more expensive and you gotta think about this too some most monitors do not have speakers so you're gonna have to buy speakers in some way so that's another expense if you're buying a monitor if you buy a TV you might get a problem that most people get black screen black black lines on the sides um, um, some of your icons are cut on the outside and you're, you're getting upset you're like oh I just bought this TV and it doesn't even work well get a monitor it'll work well Next thing though, if something doesn't work, you can always return it and get something else. But yes, it's going to cost around $200 for like a 27 inch monitor, something like that. And so, yes, so your max is like $730. On top of that, you can have like a um, 1150 1, with the monitor and accessories. But that's with gaming. Without gaming, it could cost you around uh, 600 with the monitor. But you don't need gaming accessories if you're going to do normal. But yes, so I hope this video kind of helped you get a general idea of what, what you could buy for cheaper prices. So you can buy a pretty good gaming rig that most people can like run GTA 5 and Ultra High for only like 700 bucks and most of the time it costs like a thousand two hundred dollars like oh buy this alienware for like a thousand three hundred four hundred five hundred dollars just to play a game that you could build one for only seven hundred for cheaper instead of cramming everything into a laptop so yeah hope you guys enjoyed um, please like subscribe and I'll catch you in another video